Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode of The Longest Journey. Last episode, we got the bird back with the game of cups, gave it to the old sailor who helped us get passage with the captain of the ship. Although we have to get the wind back, so we have to travel to the alchemist. And we also have to find a navigator, which we already know of a navigator. We haven't met her, but we know of her. Before we go on our journey to try and find the alchemist, I'm going to double check to see if we can see the navigator. I think we might be able to, but I don't know. At the end of this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also share if you can. That would really help me out. I need to grow my channel. And let's get to playing some Longest Journey. Let's see. Um, I just read the diary, right? Yeah. So I need to travel to... I need a map of the Northlands. Okay. <sighs> Man, I'm tired. I also need to wake up. And I apologize if you hear a bunch of sounds from my neighbors. I have to have my window open because it's way too warm. <laughs> okay, journeyman in. Let's go there first. Just to make sure. Excuse me? It doesn't yes. look like she's here. Oh, it is you. Do you know when I could not tell? Dang. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay. I need to go to the maps merchant because I need a map before I go. Did you make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn yet? Oh, uh, I forgot all about that. No, I didn't forget. By the balance, get to it. Oh man, I need a map. Did you make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn yet? Uh, By the. I tried. Ooh, this is a map of the Northlands. It's a map of the Northlands. I'm supposed to deliver this to, uh, Tun Lyak, staying at the Journeyman Inn. I guess I just go. Okay. Oh, man. It's a farmhouse. It's a small barn. It's some kind of cattle. But not the kind of cattle they breed in Kansas. <laughs> Marcuria, the road north, and the forest. This is a creepy part. It's a discarded wagon wheel. Mm. I'm scared. Not of this. Of what's about to happen. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Vesperian nymphate on your tail? I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning Robin Redbreasts. Twins, did you know? Not as if I could just leave them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, as it turned out. <sighs> Maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? No, oh, funny. Nah, <laughs> that's funny. What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow, or I've missed you so much, Crow, or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow? It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? Cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrigan stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Yeah, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. The old man was gonna gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cups handler after the, um, celebration. So, I decided to split before they put me back in a cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, 
Duh. Don't. Ever. So, I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your, uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old-fashioned fun. Like a bird zone adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. You don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. <laughs> okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you, they don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? <laughs> Sorry. But wait a second. I got a little flute. I could use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier, Hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's... trouble. All right. Um, scary part. Let's go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Diary. Yeah. Oh man, my neighbors are so loud. Monday, July 31st. I have no idea what Garrett is in Arcadia. On the road north. I made a friend. He's very nice, very funny, and he's a bird. A talking bird. Crow. New bird. He's not actually a crow, but he reminds me of one, and his personality is a lot like Crow Boys, my favorite cartoon character. He escaped from his owner or captor, to be honest, and decided to join me on my little adventure. I'm just so happy to have somebody to talk to, and with luck, he'll be able to help me out once in a while as well. We agreed that I'll use my flute to call him whenever I need him. You may not be able to tell from my writing, but there's a big silly grin on my face right now. Oh my gosh, my neighbors are being really obnoxious. Scary part, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh dear, oh dear me. Please human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Oh my gosh, I cannot take it. I might have to close my window. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Your coat does look very nice and fluffy. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Au Rubana Bitana Benort. <laughs> It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. That's a mouthful. So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. He's been gone in the forest for many days, and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole, the first Banda I've met. Oh dear, I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. Aren't your people called the mole people? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. Our given name is Banda. The little ones. Or the Banda Banta. The little ones who sing to the soil. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know. 
But there's something evil in this forest. Something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but I must find my brother. If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough, and we found our voices, we just sing. And the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth, just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu. Sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. Oh. She's calling bird. Well, crow. <laughs> she's calling crow. That's funny. She's off screen. <laughs> there hey, we crow, go. That's better. Would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete a tete with a pretty <laughs> young sparrow. But hey, crow at your service. Did you say favor? Oh, sure thing. Unless it's something extremely. No, no. Make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. <laughs> Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, mole, you said. They're savages. A lot of them. You eat birds, even. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah. I love a roasted duckling in a tangy orange. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see your point. Looking for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, <laughs> it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks say birds. Don't say birds say women. I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. <laughs> Just go look for the lost mo the lost Bandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Diary entry. I had my first encounter with a Banda today, saying Mole Man is apparently like a racial epithet and... Wait, how do you pronounce that word? I've never said that word before, I don't think. I've never used that word, really. And a big no-no with these people. His name was Ben Bondu. He was a really sweet man, or boy, or whatever he was. I can't really tell. But he was sad. Ben had lost his brother in the forest, and he was looking for him. I told him I'd keep my eyes open, and I urged Crow to do the same. I hope he's alright, because if he isn't, this forest is probably not such a friendly place after all. Mm-hmm. Meh. It's a woman, I guess. An old woman, and it looks like she's in pain. Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. Uh, she's so creepy. Does she remind you of anyone? <laughs> Maybe a few different? characters <laughs> where do you live who are you all right i'll help you home i don't want to where do you live i live not far from here not far at all no help me home and i'll cook you a fine stew i promise yes i promise just help me home and i'll reward you for your compassion yes you'll have your reward who are you Oh, I'm nobody, nobody at all. Just a frail old woman picking bones. Berries, picking berries for her stew so she can feed her prisoner. Guests, feed her guests and fatten them up for um, the long winter. So creepy. Why do you keep swallowing your words? Oh, because I'm just a frail old forgetful woman, yes. I'm sorry, but I'm busy. No, no, please help a frail old woman home. 
I don't want to, but I have to. Okay. I still need your help, Lumpud. Pretty girl. I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good thick creamy <laughs> stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. Creepy. Lead the way, ma'am. I don't want to. Yes, let's go. Come on, just Follow me, my sweet treat. <laughs> oh boy, she is the a old creepy. woman seems capable of walking on her own, strangely enough. Maybe she just needed some uh, encouragement. No, she's trying to trick you. Don't you know from fairy tales? <laughs> Looks like a cozy little burrow, like a hobbit hole. It's super creepy. They don't look like the edible sort. In fact, these mushrooms look cancerous and ugly. They look cancerous, and I'd rather not touch them. Will she not grab them either? They look cancerous, okay. and I'd rather not touch them. What about? No, there's nothing I can really use to touch them. So I feel like I need them for something. Come in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. She's creepy. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump, as well built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here and I will go pick some more berries oh and God. spices for my stuff, my stew. But wait, what about your bad back? She's lying. Well, what a strange I mean what a strange woman there's something not quite right about this place like those skulls for one they look disturbingly humanoid what's that sound where's it coming from nerve-wracking um okay task decor it's a small humanoid skull like that of a, a child good god are those things they look like is that blood what does this creature do to people it's a window but it's too small for me to squeeze through i can't climb up there besides i'm too big to fit through that tiny window. it's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of animal skin the door's locked from the outside mm -hmm. wait a second the door is locked oh my god the door is locked i'm trapped Something's cooking all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. That's a large fireplace and a fierce fire. It's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of... It's a loose floorboard. I know that will be important later. It's a loose floorboard. I'm not sure how, though. What do I have? I have a skull. Doesn't look like anything... Like, I can pick up anything else. Oh, the broom. I could pick up the broom. It's a broom. By the looks of this place, I don't think it's been used much. It's too big for me to carry around. But maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. It looks like a solid piece of furniture. It's got a chain tied around it. There's that strange knocking sound again. It's locked solid. What was that? It sounds like somebody's trapped inside the cabinet. It's too big for me to. Oh dear me. Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh my. Did my tribe send you? So to speak, I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? 
Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Vinoart. I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. The Gribbler captured you too? I guess she, it, whatever the Gribbler is, did capture me. That took me by surprise since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu Utama Tuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes, yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda, as long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now we need to find a way out of here. Okay. I've been tricked. I should have known something was wrong with that old woman. I mean, she was drooling and slobbering all over me. She kept tripping over her words and saying stuff like prisoners instead of guests, and her teeth were abnormally large. But still, if you can't trust sweet old ladies who've hurt their leg picking berries in the forest, who can you trust? Hansel and Gretel, my heart goes out to you kids. All kidding aside, however, we need to get the hell out of here before the bitch comes back. But how? Oh dear, whatever shall we do? Is that all he says? Okay, that's all he says. It's a broom. Um. It's a loose floorboard. It's a loose floor. Ooh. That pillar looks a little shaky. Okay, so I think this is what I need to do for later. That pillar looks a little shaky. It's kind of shaky, and I don't want to risk bringing the roof down on top of me. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. I think I put him through the window. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me. What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. Can you break the window and get through? Oh dear. I'm so sorry, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. The window was too thick for oh, me to okay. break. Okay. Then I will use this to break the window. There we go. And then... Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me! Oh man. <sighs> what are you going to do? I'm gonna get you out of here. Hold on. Hey, wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. What the hell am I gonna do now? I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... <laughs> She's so creepy. Oh my god. Uh, what have you done, you stupid little human? I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there! So... you think you could come into my house and... set my dinner free and get away with it? Uh... well... I will get away with it, because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you, so you'd better... you'd better run away while you still have a chance. I guess you will be my dinner tonight, then, and I had hoped to... Save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat. Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> I look for <gasps> <the> serving you. <sighs> Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Plank, plank. Gosh dang it. Oh, yay. I did it. I did it. 
Oh my gosh. <sighs> I don't know why that part always scares me so much. Something's cooking all right. I just can't put... I can't look at her. It's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of animal skin. Oh my goodness. It's broken, but it's... Okay. Anyway. Let's go. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank you, that was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my. You defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you, the life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me, and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it. Give me your map, and I will show you where our village is. Then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yay, okay. Monday late afternoon. Wow, what a day this has been. I met a bunch of new people, including a couple of furry guides and a talking bird. Killed an old witch, freed a captured Bondu, and was invited to the Bonda village for a feast in my honor. Compare this to last week when the dramatic highlight of my day was getting sausage on my pizza instead of pepperoni. I feel so empowered and starving. Okay. Let's go. They got a nice bonfire going. April! <laughs> I'm so glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my. You speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you. But the elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him, and then come down again, so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bondu's brother. The hero of the day comes to visit the old Bondu. Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving, shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger, but we don't judge her because of that. <laughs> the human is a hero, she is. Don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence and who will go on to save the balance. You are she, are you not? I don't know. Well, we will see. We will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight. And then tomorrow, we will see. But now, you must enjoy yourself. This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your courage. Thank you. Go, eat and drink and dance and then go to sleep in the spirit dig. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey, but yours is the most important one ever. So go, I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs, go. Crow? 
Oh, hey, uh, I was, uh, wondering what happened to you. What happened to you? I thought you were supposed to help out in the search. I could have used some assistance this afternoon. Uh, yeah, but I did find some mal... Some banda, didn't I? Just not the one we were looking for is all. And besides, I was beat! My wings can only carry me so far before I need a twig to rest on and a couple of juicy berries. <laughs> Speaking of berries, did you taste the ones they got here? The word is yum. Big yum. I don't know what they soaked them in, but hoo-hoo, man! Well, at least you're okay. No, oh, sure. You know me. I could use a good flea plucking, though. Care to reward me for my diligence? Diligence? Ha! <sighs> I'm guessing I'll be plucking my own fleas tonight, then, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm blaming you if I wake up with a crick in the neck tomorrow, though. Crow seems to be enjoying the party. Enjoying yourself, Crow? It's a party. I'm the party bird. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. It's April. Sit. Sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh, dear. I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother, and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my mm. entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. <laughs> oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Banda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah, well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the Spirit Dig. Where is the Spirit Dig? Right behind you, at the far end of our green. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. <laughs> oh, dear. It's April. Sit. Sit down. I don't think I, I can say anything else. Yeah. Enjoy the party. Oh, but it's... I think that's it. It's the Elder Bondu. I'm just gonna double check that that's it. Yes, in the morning. Yes. Okay. In the morning. Okay. Spirit dig time. Mushrooms or chairs <laughs> or both. It's not a big fire, but it's comfortably warm in here and the smoke has a very pleasant, very mellow texture to it. There are tunnels extending down into the earth behind the screen. It's some kind of bed made with twigs and moss. Not as comfortable as a real mattress, I'm sure, but it'll do. Go to sleep, because I don't know what else to do. I'll just lie down for a few. No, screw that. I'm getting <laughs> a good night's sleep. That's what I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. What? What the hell do you think you're doing? Wh what? What are you doing here, you arrogant bitch? You don't think you can really save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Ryan. I'm you. That's. Impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit, don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world, the two worlds, to your feeble attempts at 
redeeming yourself, is there? Go away, leave me alone. How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh, yeah? Like, you really believe that? Like, you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Don't tell me. I do it because Daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. Like right now. You're talking to yourself, April. No, that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! Shut up! Shh. It's okay, April. It's okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie, I'm so glad that, that you're... you're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind, and his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the banda never end. Are the dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits. And we have come to guide you. Why, Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you. And so he guides us here. Into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family? They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. To understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life, even when difficult and painful, is a gift. That love is priceless and rare and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference. Can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? How then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red, please tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April, and use your mind. These are your weapons, and with them you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bach bar, that you've spoken with the band of spirits, and that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Baka, April Digger who will seek and find. Oh, don't go, please don't, go! Yay, chapter five! There and back again. Oh man, and there's 13. I, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this today. I'm gonna try, but I do need to stream later, so. Okay, I'm gonna read the diary entry real quick. 
Tuesday morning. I guess I had what you could call a spiritual awakening last night, or at least a visit from the spirit world, whatever that is. Either that or an incredibly vivid dream, but I'm betting that's not it. Say hello to the ghost of Christmas future, April. Staring yourself in the eye and realizing you're a complete bitch is not an occasion to be celebrated. Okay, so she wasn't really me, but the things she said have all crossed my mind from time to time, especially lately. As for Charlie, does he really love me? I mean, like, love love me? I had no idea. No, that's a lie. I guess I had some idea, but I didn't really want to deal with it because I just don't feel that way about him. He's sweet and kind and I simply have a tendency to fall for the wrong guys for the wrong reasons. Like now, like with, oh no, I'm not even going to think about that. I should probably go see the elder. Wait, who is she talking about? Like now, like with, who has she fallen for? I'm confused. I don't think I ever picked that up before. Who did she fall for? I can't think of anybody. Okay. Besides Charlie. And with that, I'm going to have to wrap up this episode. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also share if you can. That would really help me out. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Also join me in Discord. Go check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I have lots of other content on there for you to enjoy. And I hope to see you guys next time. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.